Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. I found a dream in my email <laughs> from one of you. I'm going to let them remain anonymous, and I'm going to share it with you because it's very encouraging. Okay. I, and it was, uh, this, wait a minute. Am I that far behind? Today is July the 16th, 1.50. This is dated July the 13th, 10.25. Oh my goodness sakes alive, I'm so behind. You know what I do is I start at the top and I work my way down and I should start at the bottom and work my way up. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Alright, here we go. I had a full-blown color dream of seeing the Bride of Christ. Okay, um, keep in mind, the Bride is comprised of 144,000 people. But in this dream, she's seeing her as one person. Okay? She was breathtakingly spectacular absolutely regal, full of grace and beauty, spotless and perfect from head to toe. Many people were involved in preparing her for the wedding. Her joy and the joy of those dressing her was combined with great excitement. Everything was ready. I saw the white limousine at the curb waiting. It was massive and beautiful. I saw her finished with her preparations, then walk outside to stand by the white limousine. I have had dreams of the wedding, the bride, the reception, and other dreams wedding related but never one like this she smiled at me the entire dream I wasn't an unseen observer but I was actively there and seen by everyone there was such a beautiful quiet dignity within everyone there but very joyful too I pray this excites you and assures you we are very, very close to going. Yes, indeed, it does. And I think it's beautiful. And it just goes to show when we go outside of time, we get our glorified bodies, how perfect we will be. We just can't get there yet. We can keep trying, as the word says. You know, that sermon I did on uh, the word in the words of Jesus, Matthew 5, how he talks about how um, you were told in the Old Testament, uh, thou shalt not kill, but I say unto you, if you even hate your brother, you're guilty of murder. And, and anyway, he goes on and on like that. I hope y'all saw that. Because it's, it's a good reminder of how we're supposed to be changing our way of thinking. That it's not just, oh, I don't murder people. I don't, um, I don't ever commit adultery. I don't steal. I don't this. I don't that. And you think you're a good person. Okay. For anybody that might have that frame of mind. But the Lord made it clear. He took the Old Testament. And he fulfilled it as, at his death. And he left us with new words. You cannot lust after a woman. That's married or if you're married. And it's adultery. You can't. Like I said. You can't hate your brother. And think you're not committing murder it's the same as committing murder you have to love one another and so on and so forth so and it says at the very end so be perfect therefore as my heavenly father is perfect well that's our goal 
We keep working on that. Keep repenting. As soon as you do something, you repent of it and and uh, and know that your slate is being kept clean so that no matter when you take your last breath or you get to go outside of time, you are ready. Because some people will die first. Did you th even think that? Some people that are not meant to be part of the bride of Christ, but the Lord wants to spare them from what's coming, he will take out of here through illness or a car accident. Those things are controlled by him. You can't get mad at him if your baby died in a car accident. Do you realize what your baby has been spared of? Think about it. How old would they be now? And look what's about to happen to the children. If we don't get outside of time pretty soon. <laughs> anyway, I better shut up now or I'll get into trouble. <laughs> All right, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over each and every one of us and all of our devices and our internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.